Hello, time for a Man in Gray book review. Today's book is Toy Story, A Critical Reading by Tom Kemper, uh, published in 2019 by the British Film Institute. It's 132 pages long. This is part of BFI's Film Classic series. These are short books that analyze famous landmark films. And certainly Toy Story, the 1995 film, is a landmark in multiple ways. It was the first computer animated feature film. It was the first feature film to come out by, uh, to be produced by uh, Pixar Studios. And it was also a landmark in its plot and storytelling and its visual effects. And, and basically it just broke away from the Disney template that even non-Disney studios had been following for years. Toy Story was a contemporary story. Uh, you know, it had toys in it, but it was set in contemporary times. It wasn't a fairy tale. It wasn't based on a children's book. Uh, the characters didn't suddenly burst into song. And it had uh, characters, even though they were toys, it had characters that had real depth to them as, as characters, as personalities. They, they weren't, they weren't, it wasn't a melodrama. There wasn't an, an, an evil villain and a hero, you know, flawless hero. Uh, all the characters had depth to them. Woody, of course, this conflicted, neurotic character, and and Buzz Lightyear, this kind of deluded character who thinks he really is a spaceman. So there was characters that had real depth to them uh, compared to the, uh, the Disney movies that were going on at the time. The book is divided into three basic sections. The first section, of course, tells the story of how Toy Story came to be made, and it also gives some background on the Pixar studio. Pixar, of course, began as a part of Lucasfilm, a special effects department. Uh, eventually, uh, uh, Steve Jobs bought a uh, majority sh shareholder of it, uh, bought majority stake in, in uh, Pixar, and they began producing um, short commercials or animated shorts and commercials. But uh, the, the studio struggled to make money. Uh, and Steve Jobs contemplated multiple times uh, about shutting the studio down or selling it to some other outfit. Uh, the key breakthrough came when Jeffrey Katzenberg at the Disney studio negotiated a three-picture deal to make three uh, feature films that Pixar would, uh, would produce and then Disney would distribute. Uh, and so that led to a short film uh, being expanded into the movie we now know as Toy Story. So the first section tells all of that. One of the interesting things about this, too, the whole process of, of uh, creating Toy Story, is that the script was basically written in the way that live-action films are. Uh, what Disney tended to do with animated features is they'd come up with a, a fairy tale they wanted to tell or a, a children's book like Pinocchio that they wanted to tell, and they do a series of, the artists would do a series of storyboards, little short drawings, of the major scenes in the film to kind of give them an idea of what the plot was going to be and the pacing and everything. And then uh, they would have writers look at the storyboards and write a script based on the storyboards. But Toy Story was done the opposite way. Um, a script was written first, and then it was animated. And in fact, the script went through multiple changes. Uh, the original script for Story Story was Toy Story. Toy Story was quite different from the final project. I think there were like seven major rewrites of the film. And so uh, it really, they took an approach much more similar to what uh, live action films do. The second section of this book is a scene by scene analysis of all the scenes in the movie from beginning to end. And that's really makes up the bulk of the book. Um, and that's the part that will probably be of chief interest to film fans, fans that are film buffs or film historians. Um, one of the things he points out there is how they were very clever at using the advantages of computer animation. Of course, in 1995, computers didn't have nearly the memory that they have now or the processing speed. So they were limited in some of the things they could do. But they realized early on that computer animation could do some things rather easily that hand-drawn animation could not. One of the things is shifting perspective. Um, you know, like, for example, in a live-action film, where a camera zooms in or pans from one side to the other to change perspective. This is done multiple times in Toy Story uh, where the characters are moving around and the camera, it seems like a camera, of course there's not a real camera, but it seems like the camera's moving around. And, but they also realized that uh, the, the state of animation at the time 
made humans look very unrealistic and unbelievable. And so they were very careful to limit the amount of uh, screen time for the human characters, An Andy and the other characters, who are mostly seen from distance or parts of them. Uh, so they, they were clever in the way they handled all of that. Um, one of the interesting insights that uh, Kemper has in this book is he, com he compares Toy Story to a, another landmark film that came out in 1995, Quentin Tarantino's uh, movie, um, uh, Pulp Fiction. Now, you wouldn't think that Pulp Fiction had anything to do with Toy Story, but they were both landmark films in that they both made a lot of references to pop culture uh, jokes that Toy Story, there's a lot of pop culture references that only adults would have gotten, not children. Uh, and they also, both films were kind of mashups of various genres. And in Toy Story, you combine kind of the uh, the buddy film with science fiction, because Buzz Lightyear is a science fiction character, and Woody is a cowboy. So you have kind of a Western theme and a science fiction and a buddy picture all kind of, and an adventure film also. And there's also a quest because he has to go and rescue uh, Buzz, and so it's a quest film. So it's a blending of different genres, and Pulp Fiction does the same thing. It blends genres and makes a lot of pop culture references. And so the second part of the, of the book goes through each one of these scenes and uh, analyzes uh, the pluses and minuses and some of the innovative things that were done there. And the final part of the book is basically the legacy of Toy Story. Of course, um, the, as I mentioned, Steve Jobs was pretty definite that he wanted to unload Pixar. He, he didn't think it was going to make money. But after the early rushes of Toy Story were shown to Disney people, they were very enthusiastic about it. And the Disney executives were sure this film was going to be a huge hit. And so uh, Jobs very wisely held off on his plan to sell the film uh, or sell the, the Pixar studio. And the film, of course, became a huge hit. Uh, and it led to a lot of imitations. In fact, Jeffrey Kass Katzenberg eventually left Disney and started his own studio, DreamWorks, which produced all the Shrek movies. And they picked up on the, some of the same ideas that you see in the Pixar, early Pixar movies. A lot of pop culture references, um, characters with more depth to them than in traditional Disney movies, and characters not really breaking into song. So um, a lot of innovation there. Of course, Disney eventually bought out uh, the uh, Pixar studio uh, and incorporated it into their own studio. And in some ways, it's similar to what happened when China took over Hong Kong. At first, uh, Disney allowed Pixar complete independence. They continued to make innovative films like Up and A Bug's Life and um, Inside Out. But over time, uh, the Disney corporate mentality began to take hold in Pixar. And, and so you see in some of the later Pixar films, the more recent ones, a lot of similarities to Disney. There's an over-reliance on sequels. There's kind of um, over-the-top storytelling, um, characters that are more two-dimensional now. There's less There's less depth to them. Uh, there's more slapstick. A lot of the, uh, the villains are really, really evil. And a lot of the, the tropes that Disney did for better or worse are now coming true in Pixar. And Pixar is no longer the, the outsider independent studio that was breaking ground that it used to be back when Toy Story came out. So if you are interested in the movie Toy Story and uh, are, are, are just in computer animation and uh, altogether, this is a really fascinating book. It's brief, but it's very detailed. Uh, and it will really make, if you haven't seen the original Toy Story in years, uh, I, I recommend that you go back and watch it after you read this book, uh, and you'll you'll pick up on a lot of things that you probably didn't realize uh, when you first saw it, especially if you saw it as a kid. You'll see a lot of really innovative ideas in filmmaking uh, that Toy Story had and left as a legacy for future animated films. The book is Toy Story, A Critical Reading. Uh, the author is Tom Kemper. This has been another Man in Great book review. Thanks for watching.